गुड मॉर्निंग गाइस अंजनी कुमार हियर डीलिंग इंस्ट्रूमेंटेशन सब्जेक्ट फॉर अ फाइनल ईयर इलेक्ट्रिकल स्टूडेंट्स राइट सो टिल नाउ वी हैव सक्सेसफुली डिस्कस्ड अबाउट टाइप्स ऑफ डिजिटल वोल्ट मीटर्स राइट सो व्हाट वी आर डिस्कस्ड टिल नाउ टिल नाउ वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द काउंटर टाइप डिजिटल वोल्ट मीटर सो व्हाट इज द फंक्शन ऑफ अ ब्लॉक्ड व्हाट इज अ डिजिटल वोल्ट मीटर राइट व्हाट इज अ ब्लॉक डायग्राम ऑफ अ डिजिटल वोल्ट मीटर we discussed about uh, how it will be advantages than analog voltmeters right after that we discussed about the type of types of digital voltmeters in that uh, we discussed about the counter type digital voltmeters so whatever the drawbacks that can be overcome with the help of successive approximation type digital voltmeter right so after that uh, we discussed about uh, ramp type digital voltmeter so then we discussed about uh, dual slope for a, we started a single slope and dual slope whatever the drawbacks in a single single slope or whatever the output that depends on resistor and capacitors due to aging effect will different outputs you will get uh, that can be overcome with the help of a dual slope or integrated type dvm type dvm right so these are the things that we discussed till now in this session we are going to discuss about uh, the another digital voltmeter that is called continuous balance type digital voltmeter right right so this is somewhat important uh, uh, for your board exams right so what is a continuous balance step it's also called as a servo balancing digital voltmeter right so this we can also called as a servo balancing digital voltmeter right so why we are calling this as a servo balancing or a servo positioning digital voltmeter because in our block diagram approach the conversion of whatever the analog data into digital form that we require a servo motor right so we are using servo motor to convert analog data into digital form so that's why we are calling this type of digital voltmeter as a servo balancing type digital voltmeter right so before going to digital voltmeter you should know what is a servo motor right so what is the main difference between all the motors you know about the dc motor series motor shunt motor stepper motor universal motor why these servo motors are entirely different from other motors right so what is the function of a servo motor right nowadays we are using this type of servo motor what on what basis that we are using right that's uh, we need to discuss right after that we will discuss about the block diagram approach right if you know the servo motor uh, you it should be very clear for you right understand the block diagram approach right so it doesn't mean that uh, directly go to the block diagram and explain no oh, this is the operation of servo motor it should be very difficult for us to understand the concept right so that's why i need to explain the basic of a servo motor how it will work so what is the difference uh, from other motors and then we'll start a block diagram right so i'll start the servo motor it's very very important motor right right so what is a servo motor so you know the put, you know about the motor so motor is a device which converts electrical energy into mechanical form right so you have a motor right for a motor what is my input input is nothing but electrical energy 
right either voltage or current right whatever the output that you are getting that is called a mechanical so that is called torque or force right right you know about the motor so motor is nothing but it's a conversion of electrical to mechanical energy conversion device you know how the motor will work i don't want to explain how the motor will work if you want to know the working you just go through my previous videos with that you can clearly understand the basic of each and every electrical machines right now what is a servo motor right so you can convert all the motors into servo motors right how we can convert right so the servo motor it uh, accept uh, servo mechanism it works on the principle of servo mechanism so what is a servo mechanism is it the servo motor each and every motor we will convert into servo servo motor with the help of uh, servo mechanism right the servo motor will works on the principle of servo mechanism right so what is a servo mechanism right whatever the physical quantities so whatever the physical quantities in a motor whatever it may be motor it is whatever the physical quantity that we can control automatically see what is the main difference between motor and servo motor servo motor which exhibits the property of a servo mechanism so what is a servo mechanism the physical quantities of every motor that we can control automatically so that is a servo mechanism i'll explain what are the physical quantities you know in a motor the speed velocity torque angular speed so these are the physical quantities so that we can control automatically right i'll just write them definition right it controls the physical quantities like speed velocity angular speed automatically right so what is the difference between a motor and a servo motor means that the servo motor exhibits the property of servo mechanism right that's why we are calling this this as a servo motor but suppose the motor you know about the motor right so giving input you are getting output so that is nothing but a open loop system or a closed loop system so that is a open loop system right but the servo motor which controls per suppose this is a motor so you are giving a input right so you are getting output right so i just want to get the speed at 180 degree position right so i'll give the input so the input that rotated is uh, 200 degrees position right so in a simple motor you just give the input you will get the output i don't know where the position that the rotor rotates but we don't have any control control of a position of a rotor right so for a given here here 200 degree i just want to uh, i just want a rotor position at uh, 180 degree position i just give you input i will get the output for a, from a motor it's rotate uh, whatever it may be maybe it rotates from 180 degrees or it rotates from 100 degrees 90 degrees 120 degrees whatever it may be so that's my result so you don't have any control the position of a, a motor but with the help of servo motor so we can control that position for suppose a given input is a input uh, whatever it may be you, uh, you have given the input to the motor the motor rotates at 100 degree position 
correct is it fine for us so definitely not so i'll send a feedback signal to input it will generate the error signal so then we have a controller which control the position of a motor so after that my my position will change up to up to the process repeat up to whatever the output that position whatever the output position that we required so this is concept called as a closed loop system you know about a closed loop system it requires a feedback to input right so whatever the motor that we are performing open loop systems so we don't have any control of output right so with the help of servo motor which works like a closed loop system so that means we have a feedback path so then it will generate a error signal then it will send a controller so a controller which controls the position of a motor but like i'll explain how it will a mechanism will work all right i think you understand what is the difference between a motor and a servo motor so motor is a normal device which convert a electrical energy into mechanical energy right so what why we can call it as a servo motor which express the property of a servo mechanism so what is a servo mechanism it means whatever the physical quantities that we can control automatically right like in a motor if you want to control the position of a rotor it's not possible why because it's an open loop system you just give input will get the output whatever the position that the motor rotates but with the help of servo motor you can control the position of a rotor right you will get a mechanical energy right so mechanical means rotation on which speed on which position the rotor rotates that you that you need to control either 90 degrees position you can control either 180 degrees position you can control 200 degree position you can control automatically how it will work we will see so that is a closed loop system it works on the closed loop system right right here how it will work means we have a input this we can call it as an error detector so after that we have a controller controller is a proportional integral controller right a derivative controller whatever the controller it is and here we have a motor and here we will get the output and now we send a signal to a detector that is called a feedback signal right so this is the this is called error detector right so this is the mechanism how the servo motor will work now you will give the input right so per suppose if you want if you decided that uh, your rotor rotates at uh, 90 degree position right you just decide whatever the output that you are getting you just uh, need to rotate the rotor at 90 degrees position the speed of the rotor will get at 90 degrees position right with the help of servo mechanism only it's possible so normal motors you won't get uh, whatever the position that you required right see you just apply per suppose whatever the input that you are given so the motor starts rotate at 180 degrees right so you given input voltage and current or input you will get a 180 degrees position right so right so when initially you have to apply the input right so what happen the motor starts rotating right you know you don't know the position of the rotor right but my target position is 90 degrees right so whatever the rotor position so if it is 90 degrees no not right so then there then, then it will send a signal to the error it will send a signal to the input it will generate a error detector error detector error, error signal right so that is not my target position right so it will generate an error signal that error signal will enter into the controller the controller which controls the uh, motor right again you will get um, whatever the so you can control the speed over here either uh, 180 degrees 
120 degrees, 130 degrees. Is it my required position? Not again send the feedback signal. It will generate an error signal. So after that, the controller will control the motor. Again, you'll get 100. Again, send a signal, feedback signal. Error signal will generate a control, controller control the con control the motor. Now we'll get the 90 degrees position. So this is my target position. Up to now the system we can control automatically. We don't have any any manual control. Automatically it will control the position. Okay. So your target position is 90. Initially for a given input the motor rotating at 180 degrees. Is it my target position? No. You send a signal to the feedback signal to the error. So the error will be generated. Right, so then according to the terror signal, your motor starts rotating. Right, like that, uh, the mechanism of a servo motor will work automatically. We can control the position of a rotor. But I suppose normal motor, if you give an input, the rotate at 180 degrees position. You know, whatever it may be, the rotation is 180, 220, whatever it may be. You just, you just take it. So you don't have a control. But a normal motor. input output you have a given input your target position is 90 but rotated 220 degrees right you just want to take it out so you don't have a control of that position with the help of normal motor right with the help of servo motor you can control the position by it by maintaining a feedback signal right so whatever the input minus feedback it will generate error signal according to error signal the controller will control the motor position okay you uh, next time you will get 130 degrees so is it pause is it uh, target position uh, no again you will send a feedback signal to the error signal so and and again whatever the input previous 180 minus 130 that again some some uh, some amount of input will be sent to the controller the controller which controls the motor again you will get the position of 120 like that automatically we can control you we can control and you will get your target position right with the help of this is the working principle of a servo mechanism the closed loop system right now the here we have to understand DC servo motor in our digital voltmeter we are using this type of DC servo motor let's see how the DC servo motor will work this is a DC motor where the mechanical output we are giving to the gear system here we are having a shaft shaft value this gear system we will give to the potentiometer so here we will have the control signal and this is my input listen to me carefully this is DC motor this is a gear system this we can call as a shaft this called a potentiometer this is a controller right now you see you just want the target position is 180 degrees Right. your target position is 180 degrees right for this you give the input voltage or current you just giving the input right so DC input is electrical so you you, you, you generate a mechanical input so here you'll get a mechanical that means your gear system starts right you have a gear system starts right so the gear which have a different positions right so when the gear starts rotating one end of gear which is connected to the potentiometer which is having a resistance right so when the mechanical energy given to the rotor whenever the mechanical energy generated your gear system will get gear system will start rotating initially it starts at 200 degrees position right so this is my this is your target position no that is not my target position right so one end of the gear which is connected to the potentiometer right so whenever the gear starts rotated right so whatever the resistance of the potentiometer will change so whenever the resistance of a potentiometer change which is connected to the controller 
whatever the resistance change means here the voltage change whatever the voltage here the voltage will change this voltage again applied and again the mechanical rotation will change and again resistance will change voltage change depends on voltage your mechanical energy change again the gear rotates so if you reaches 180 degrees so that's my required position i'll send that i will send a signal that uh, the motor rotates at 180 degrees position like this uh, this the dc servo motor will work i hope it's clear right so you have a gear system so gear system it will show with which position your rotor rotates so initially that is at 200 degree centi 2d 200 degrees position the motor rotor rotates that means given a voltage it will convert some mechanical energy the motor starts to rotate 200 position is it our required position no another end of the another end of the potentiometer which is connected to the gear now whenever gear starts to rotate definitely the resistance will change now whenever the resistance change if the resistance is change automatically the voltage across the device will change whenever the voltage change again the mechanical input change mechanical output change again the rotor another position there is a 200 190 position again resistance change again voltage change again mechanical change and it will come to 180 degree so that is my target position you will send the signal that you can, my shaft is rotated at 180 degrees position i hope it's clear so this is a mechanism of automatically control the speed here also your target position is 90 degrees initially you will get to 100 180 whatever it may be and again feedback signal like that the feedback in terms of a potentiometer right whenever the gear system change your rotation potentiometer connection resistance will vary whenever the resistance will vary this voltage will be vary again mechanical vary again rotation is it required no no again resistance change again voltage change again mechanical change like that uh, the dc potential dc servo motor will work so this is the concept that we are using in our digital voltmeter techniques right now we'll see the servo balancing or continuous balance type uh, digital voltmeter right Again, this will give us to the power amplifier, and we have a servo motor. Let a simple block diagram. Here, you will get the DC input, so which you want to convert into digital form. Here we are having an input attenuator or amplifier, right? So here we'll get the overload protection or AC rejection, right? So whatever the sig can be, this we can call as chopper, right? So you have a chopper which is having. It. So this is called a potentiometer. Right, whatever the output which is converted to AC drive, drive of 50 hertz. Right, so this is called a pre-amplifier. This we can call it as a power amplifier. This is a servo motor. Right, here we get the display. 
So this servo motor, this is called a DC supply. So this is a block diagram of a continuous balance type or a servo mechanism type digital voltmeter. Here we have a servo servo motor. So why why we are calling a servo motor? Why why we are calling a servo balancing type means we are using a servo motor, right? So these are the different blocks. You know about the input attenuator, overload uh, protection, and uh, EC rejection, and the chopper, which is having a two, which is uh, having a two voltage. One voltage is from potentiometer, another voltage from unknown voltage. Output of the chopper, which is converted to AC drive of 50 hertz supply. After that, preamplifier, power amplifier, then the connected to servo motor, right? now i'll explain each and every block functioning right so whatever the input the dc input so what is meant by chopper chopper which is nothing but dc to dc converters right so chopper that requires a dc so that's why one end of the chopper which is converted chopper is nothing but it acts and act as a comparator right chopper is nothing but comparator which compares the two voltages that is one voltage coming from the potentiometer right one voltage coming out from the potentiometer another voltage which is my unknown dc voltage which is converted to digital form hope it's clear chopper is nothing but a comparator okay so whatever my dc unknown dc voltage which is given to the input attenuator if it is uh, very low it will convert it is very high attenuator or amplifier you know about everything of attenuator right if if you are dc supply is very small right it's very difficult to convert into digital form so that's why we need to increase the level but the same duration and same length you just need to brightness or increases the value so that can be done with the help of input attenuator and we have a overload protection and is whatever the whatever the output of input attenuator that you having unknown dc supply if there is any ac values because whatever the chopper that require dc supply right any other ac value harmonics value that is going to be eliminated here the pure dc you will get hope it's clear what is the function of overload protection it can protect the overload the overload from uh, dc supply from any other fault analysis and all these things and we have a ac rejection whatever the ac components from the dc that is going to be eliminated with the help of ac rejection because only pure dc that we need to apply so right uh, the chopper which is having a uh, two voltages one voltage is from a uh, potentiometer another voltage is from my unknown voltage which is coming out from the input attenuator and ac rejection right you have a two voltages the comparator the chopper which will compare the two voltages it will send a difference voltages right so definitely there will be a differences will be present so that difference you will generate the function of a chopper it will converts square wave pulsating waveform right you know about the chopper working of a chopper i don't want to explain the concept of chopper working which convert the differential voltage in square wave so that is nothing but in a dc form right so the square wave which is given to the ac drive so that means it will convert it in a train of pulses right it will generate the ac wave form hope it's clear whatever the dc that is that is given to the ac drive of 50 hertz supply so then what uh, how what more type of that uh, you are having you are having a train of pulses right square pulses train of pulses that related to ac pulses that you are having right so then it will be given to the preamplifier if it is uh, very less it, if, if it is very small it will be converted it is very high if it is very high it will convert it to very low in order in order to convert uh, whatever that the uh, strain of pulses into digital form hope it's clear right so whatever the output differential voltage that will be, that will be given to the ac drive it will generate a square wave form right so preamplifier it increases the level the power amplifier which increases the power power that can be hits the servo motor so whatever the pulses that coming out from the ac drive which is coming out from the ac drive now that can be preamplifier and power amplifier then the pulses will enter into the servo motor now see the magic 
servo motor with we have a train of pulses right so servo motor what should do means which can control the position of a potentiometer which can the pulses will be coming to the servo motor servo motor will starts right so these type of pulses will enter to position it will control the position of a potentiometer at what whatever the difference comparator will make a zero up to that you can control the position of a servo motor like this it can control is there any zero it can control is there any zero like the position of a potentiometer these pulses will control so after that when when it reaches uh, whatever the difference is zero then the remaining pulses will displayed on the screen right how many counter will be there the counter counts how many pulses is there that can be displayed on a digital screen hope it's clear nothing is the simple mechanism so the chopper is nothing but comparator which is having a two inputs a dc input one input from the dc potentiometer another input coming out from the unknown dc voltage right if unknown dc voltage is very less we have an attenuator which can increase the levels and we have ac rejection is there any ripples or ac components that are present in a dc that can be eliminated so pure dc that can be applied from the chopper or a comparator which compares the two input voltages and gives the difference right so that difference voltage will be entered into the dc drive which means which will be converted into ac form so we have a preamplifier which amplifies the output the output of the comparator and which can gives a force that required to hit servo motor so this type of pulse is power amplifier for this then the the uh, pulses will enter into the servo motor so whatever the pulses in a servo motor which controls the position of a dc potentiometer up to when the position will be controlled means whatever the com 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 comparator will read a zero signal that means both are equal make unknown voltage equal to potentiometer voltage if these two are equal whatever the comparator output voltage is zero and then we have a remaining pulses is there so counter will counts how many pulses remaining so that pulses is going to be displayed on the screen so whatever the screen that you have you are unknown voltage right like that you are unknown voltage which is converted to digital form so why we are using a servo balancing means whatever the mechanism that you are having to balance the voltages in a comparator by balance by by main, by, by by maintaining the position of a dc sir dc potentiometer so that's why the main function is a servo motor so that's why we are calling as a servo mechanism type digital voltmeter i hope it's clear from my side right so nothing is the whatever the dc that can be applied to the ac because whatever the servo motor uh, either dc servo motor whatever it may be so but i need to convert it to more pulses so that's why we are energized with a ac drive whatever the train of pulses that coming out from the comparator will gives to the preamplifier after that the power amplifier with that power amplifier it can hits the servo motor it will come to the position will be controlled but like this the continuous balance step digital mode meter will work right so thank you for now in the next session we will discuss about a digital frequency meter thank you for now